The best I can tell, this is a 1993. It is quite interesting, actually. It has aluminum lugs, which might make it look like a steel lug bike, but it's actually aluminum lugs with carbon fiber tubes. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, all the tubes are, are carbon fiber with aluminum lugs, except for the case of the forks, which are aluminum. So it's pretty interesting. It, you know, it's a kind of a strange transitional period for bikes where you have the a carbon fiber with down tube shifters, but also lugs. So kind of a weird transitional time. This has the this has the RX100 group set, and I didn't even know about these, but from what I've read and heard, these are right under the 105s. Anyway, the reason I'm deciding to go ahead and get this thing back into condition, restore it, so to speak, is because I think I have everything I need already. Tires, of course. These things look ancient. Bar tape, same. It needs a saddle, same. I will take off the rack because I don't think anybody will want that with this type of bike. And I'll change the pedals because I don't think anybody will even know how to use these pedals. No, I'm joking about that, but I, I don't know what they are. I have no idea what, what to do with those. So I'm going to put some regular flat pedals on. But otherwise, it's all there. So being the fact I have everything, why not just, why not just do it? All right. Very nice. I don't know what I'll do with this. I doubt I can really sell it. I put a little thin coat of grease in there just to help the next poor guy who has to work on this. Not a lot, just a bit. I mean, this is actually going to be way too high for me, but you know, whoever buys the bike or gets the bike will uh, probably be bigger than me, and that looks like it might be a good starting point. Cool. Uh, let's keep the good good feelings going and just start removing like what I mean by that is do easy stuff let's start removing some of this let's start removing some of this junk that's up on the handlebars uh, I see an old computer that was there once I see yeah well it's all just computer related stuff let's also get rid of this ugly old reflector that's going to require a little bit more well that's interesting the bolt for this um, quill stem is recessed way down in there. I've never seen that. Okay. I didn't know what all this uh, spiral bound stuff was I thought maybe it was uh, some kind of protector but it's actually the wire from the computer looks like we're going to need some goo gone here some kind of sticker decal used to be there I guess everybody knows about this, right? Gugon. It's really handy and it's pretty cheap too. I think you can even get it at the Dollar Tree in even tinier quantities. And if this doesn't work or just becomes too difficult, then sometimes you can grab like a heat gun. It's starting to, yeah, I think it's starting to break up. It is, it is. I bought this heat gun, this uh, plug-in one, a long time ago. I probably didn't even spend $20 on it, but wow, it's totally worth having if you have a, any kind of workshop. It's pretty dirty. If you have any kind of workshop, definitely get one of these. I mean, I don't use it all the time, but when I do use it, it's really worth it. And sometimes when I use it, I screw up the paint. So we have to be very careful about that because it can get extremely hot. It has two settings. I'll just go for the low setting right now. Because like I said, I don't want to, I don't want to damage the paint. I just want to loosen up the, the residue. Okay, that actually only took another five minutes, maybe scrubbing and rubbing on it until I finally got it pretty much completely finished. Unfortunately, I did actually scratch into the paint right there a little bit. 
By the way, if you have a bungee or something, you can kind of get the, the front wheel and the handlebar to stay stationary if you hook it up, something like that. There we go. And my whole bike just went down a little bit. Let's tighten the stand. All right, broke that loose. That's a good sign. Okay, looks like it's, yep, doesn't even take a tap. So we're just gonna put, pull that up. Ooh, gross. Water. All right, so uh, now we just need to take that nut off. I have this old uh, bike tool. It's actually, I've abused it so much. Like, I think it's, it's, you know, it's not really perfect anymore. I wouldn't mind getting a new one, a better one maybe. <clears throat> okay, but for now, this is all I have. Of course, you can use a big uh, uh, adjustable spanner. Okay, it's off. And straight to the garbage. And let's put a tiny bit of grease on it and just tighten it right back up where it's at. I'm sure true bike mechanics would say, you know, you need to use a special grease, but I honestly just use whatever automotive bearing grease I have. This time I have Valvoline. I think it was the cheapest I had at the auto parts store that day. Pretty good, but once I have the bike together, I may be able to get it um, even better. Because right now, like with everything on the bike stand, it's all twisting and moving. I'll, I'll come back to that once I get the bike on the ground again. There it goes. All right. Nice thing about quill stems that that we lost uh, with when we went to Threadless is the how easy it is to adjust the height. Being this is a, a bigger bike, it's going to have a bigger rider. Um, I find usually they don't like to slam stems as much or sometimes not going to be one of you as flexible and stuff. So I'm going to bring that up kind of high-ish. More than likely that'll be more comfortable for your average rider. The tires on these look awful. They are probably 23s or something like that. As I was taking the wheel off, I noticed this. So apparently that's going to need some attention. Oh, this is like super hard. Come on, beach wind, don't break. Wow, wow. Oh, this feels like it might be the tightest, hardest tire I've ever dealt with here. I mean, that was extreme. It's like it's glued on or something. There's something inside here, I think, more than just an inner tube. I don't know what's going on. All right, we're getting somewhere. This is just, this is bad. I don't know if you can see that. Look what's going on here. Look at that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the filming and uh, come back when I make some progress. All right, folks, I've made some good progress. I think we're getting pretty close. To, I just kept having to go around with the screwdriver and doing it piece by piece. And I think we're getting close to uh, getting this tube out. <laughs> I think this tube isn't gonna isn't gonna be reusable. I mean, this must be the original tires and tube, which means they're 25 years old if it's a 1993. And uh, because the, the tires even said specialized, they're even specialized original tires. Oh man, it's so horrible. It's like sticky and cracky at the same time. Nasty, nasty. And I get to do the same thing on the back one too, I'm sure. Just gonna cut 
with this so I don't have to do the valve right now. They're very thick. The inner tube itself, the wall thickness, I, I don't know if I've ever seen any that thick. That's interesting. Ugh, that's going to the garbage. Those were the nastiest tires I've ever dealt with, but I'm happy to say they're totally off. And we're left with this Mavic 192 made in France rim with the RS100 hub, Shimano RS100 hub. And I'm just gonna give it a nice little clean down. The bearings on this one actually feel okay, so I'm not gonna mess with it. Brush, brush, brush your hubs, brush the dirt away. That looks much better already. Okay, okay digging through my pile of bike tires and tubes, I did find this. Uh, Michelin Pro 3 race service course, which I bought over in Switzerland a few years ago. Um, I actually like this tire, but I might as well use it before it, you know, basically becomes rotted. Actually, I have a set of them here, so that'll look pretty good, I guess. All right, we're pretty much finished with the front of the bike for now anyway. So now let's turn our attention to the back gonna go ahead and pull that back wheel off but, but first let's see let's put the chain checking tool on this chain and see if it's a good chain so this is like a gauge basically it's a gauge tool one end should actually one end can go in but both shouldn't for sure so if both go in here I'll show you what I mean so if you stick one end on this is the longer one if this one goes in, for sure the chain is stretched. Okay, see it's not able to go in. If that chain was stretched, this would fall in. Now on the other side, this one can go in, but doesn't mean it has to, I believe. This is the shorter end. Okay, even this one doesn't go in, so this is a, a very good chain. So this one can go in, and probably if you cleaned off the chain really good and maybe pulled really hard, you might be able to get it to slip in. But even this doesn't go in, so I think this chain is actually quite new. And it doesn't look like there's any easy way to get it off. You can't. You just, we're just gonna have to. We're just gonna have to cut it. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't cut the spokes. <laughs> there we go. Yep, I'm gonna have to cut this one in two spots. There we go. All right. The monster truck? Yeah. It's not a race car either. Maybe it can be in the race still. Well, we can see. Okay. Okay, it's been several days and the evapo rust did its job. That looks a lot better. But I did notice an interesting thing suddenly is this is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven speed. 
but it's actually a cassette hub rather than a freewheel hub. So I've never actually seen that before. I thought cassette hubs always start at eight speed. So it's pretty interesting. I don't know if that would mean that you could put an eight speed on if you wanted, but anyway, everything looks cleaned up now. I did tighten the bearings off camera, so it's, it's uh, good now. And I'm going to just grease this up and put the cassette back on. Now for the pedals, I'm going to replace these old things with these. These aren't great really. I think I paid, I don't know, like $14 for these or something like that. And uh, anyway, I think they look nicer than these. So with pedals, one of them is standard direction thread and then the other is backwards thread. And the way I always try to remember it is the drive side is the normal side and then the non-drive side is the wonky side. So that means when you face it like I am, it should be this direction. Yep. And then you can kind of do this type of thing too to get it off faster. There we go. There we go. And if the chain and everything is off, you can do the same type of deal over here. There we go. I always like to put just a touch of grease on there. I think, you know, generally you're supposed to. It's not just my idea. But uh, that's obviously to make it a little bit easier to get these off when you need to do so. Let's try to get that little bit of rust off of here. You know, nobody likes rust on their bikes. I'm just gonna try this, what is it, 600 and 400 grit sandpaper. That looks a lot better. All right, ended up putting this uh, long stem tube on here. It looks kind of ridiculous, but I have like six of these and I hardly ever ride my carbon rims. So I don't want to sit here and order new parts just for this uh, bike, which I know I'm not going to get that much money for, you know, that's how it goes. So uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the long stem. It'll work fine. I've actually done that on other bikes before. Use these long stem tubes. Yeah, I'm gonna move these uh, levers up a little bit. I think this is kind of the old style they used to do. Oh wow, actually I can't because, let me zoom you in. I can't really go up hardly at all. I'm not even gonna bother with it at such a small amount, but you see that? The handlebar actually has um, kind of a relief, I guess, for the, for the cables right there. Not that it's being used, but uh, yeah, you know, I don't think it'll be great to pinch on that. So I think I'll just leave them where they are. So uh, yeah, I'll just go ahead and rewrap the bars right now. So I'm going to reuse this uh, old bar tape I had from the other bike. I find this, this type of tape that doesn't have any adhesive on it. At least this one that I've had, it, it does seem to be possible to rewrap it at least one time with pretty good success. And my new way of wrapping is center to out, kind of the bad way. And I think I like to go over the front like that. So over, not under, middle to end. That way you don't have to use any tape or anything uh, and it just looks really clean. Okay, the bike is pretty much done, so I wonder how much I actually spent on this bike or how much it's I put into it. Again, the bike itself was free, which is amazing. The saddle that, you know, used, I probably could get $10, $15 for it. I don't know what I paid new, probably no more than $25. I'll put it up on the screen. The bar tape was used. That was This is definitely its last time being used. It looks nice, but it was getting pretty thin and stretchy, so that's that's it. That's worth nothing. I put a couple used uh, bar end caps because I don't remember if this one had them or not, but I don't know, but I put some used ones on, so that's nothing. Um, tires, I thought they were great, but upon closer inspection when they're inflated up, I can see some cracking on them, so they're a bit old and 
ultimately will need to be replaced, but I will include that information into the ad, of course. Um, they're good enough for now. I would ride on them around here in Florida, not going super fast or anything, but if I were going up in the mountains or anything like that, definitely I'd, I'd want to replace those. But uh, what else? The pedals. These are, like I said, I think around $14 I paid. I'll put them up on the screen. They're pretty much in like new condition. So, you know, it's a. <laughs> I probably don't, I can only really count the saddle and the pedals in terms of parts that I actually, you know, are worth anything. So I probably don't have no more than $25 in this bike. So whatever I can sell it for will be just uh, some profit. I don't think I'll be able to sell it for a whole lot. I'm going to start off at maybe, I don't know, what do you guys think actually? I'll put this video up, let me know what you think I should try to sell this bike at. I won't post it until I get some feedback. Um, Anyway, let's go for a ride. I hope you guys can hear me okay. The bike is now running perfectly and I also adjusted the barrels a little bit. Now the shifting is absolutely perfect. We have indexed rear shifting and uh, friction front shifting. It's actually brilliant. The whole bike rides excellently. Check it out. So smooth and nice. I don't know. Thanks everybody for watching. Let me know what you think the value of this bike is and uh, catch you guys next time. Bye.